Well, hey, thank you so much for joining online today. We're so excited for you to be here. Whether you're joining on YouTube or Facebook, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Yep. Yep. And so who are you? Oh, yeah. My name is Jairus. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Jairus. And as you can see, uh, my wife is not joining me today. I, I'm joined I by Pastor Rich. Um, I am so not Abby. I am not Abby. We are, we are trying to keep the social distancing right. thing. We're, we're of, nice and professional. Right. Yeah. And it's going to be a great day. Although, I have to be honest, the whole social distancing thing is really driving me nuts. And even being around Jairus right now, normally, under normal circumstances, I'm like running away from Jairus because under normal circumstances, he's trying to hug me and stuff. And I don't really like that. I'm kind of, but man, I really miss a hug from you. I know. Brother. I was going to say, you look like you could use a hug right yeah, now. Yeah, but I'm going to We won't do it. We won't do it. Okay. Well, anyways, hey, we're so glad you're joining us. And, you know, you're joining us online. It's kind of a unique way of, of, of having church these days. There's this global pandemic going on. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, social distancing happens, happening. But one thing is sure, that no matter where we are, uh, wh- whether you're in your living room watching, sitting on a couch, whether you're in your bedroom watching, whether you're sitting at a, at a coffee table with your, with your mobile device watching, wherever you are, despite the fact that there's this global pandemic going on, we know that the Holy Spirit can be exactly where you are. And that's what we're believing God for. Yeah, and, and maybe even today as you're watching, maybe this is the first time you've ever, you've ever tuned in and you're watching service with us. Uh, we we would like to connect with you in this time, as this sure. time where we are disconnected. Uh, one of the ways that we can do that is you can just simply text Life Church to 97000, uh, and we, we just love to connect with you that way and get you kind of in the know of maybe what things that are going on and things like that. Yep. Uh, as well as one of the other things about this time is that uh, we're going to connect with each other uh, right. as we are watching service. So right. whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can go ahead and comment and say, hey, maybe where you're watching from today or, or, or what it's like, but we want to stay connected. And, and doing that with each other in That's this right. time. Right. As well as the kids. This is another really cool yeah. thing that we're able to do with Church yeah. Online. Is Pastor Alex and the team has worked really hard uh, to make sure that we have resources available to you. Uh, and one of the things, so if, you, if you're on YouTube, you can click see more. And in the description, you can go ahead and see that there's links there for, for the kids' yeah. lessons. As well as on Facebook, Great it's in the curriculum. description. Great curriculum on Sunday mornings for that. Yeah, actually, you know, it's been pretty impactful for even for us. Uh, my own, my two-year-old is, is memorizing scripture as yeah. we're able to do church yeah, together. That's, that's so, awesome. Uh, do it, absolutely. So you can do that. You know, there's kids program. And, you know, let us know where you're at. You know, you can just comment in the, in the, uh, in the YouTube feed there. You can comment where you're located. We, last week, we had somebody from Bangladesh saying they were watching the service. So it's really cool that we're yeah, so able to comment where you're watching from that's today. Right, that's right. Now, once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so glad that you're here, that you're, that you're worshiping with us. And we are believing that God has an amazing word for us, amazing worship. So I want to challenge you to do something. You know, I know that this is kind of unconventional how we're doing church right now. But you know, you could stand up in your living room. You could raise your hands and worship God this morning and just invite the Holy Spirit exactly where you're located right now. Let's worship God together. Come on. Like a tidal wave, a consuming flame, I am overwhelmed in your presence. You are calling me to my destiny. Where you're leading me, I will follow. Your love, your love is breaking out. It's breaking out. My heart, my heart is singing now.
Those of you joining us online, my name is Josh and I'm one of the pastors here on staff. What a bizarre time we are living in. So just the fact that we are able to get together like this through our screens is such a huge blessing. The church is still alive and uh, God is definitely moving in the church right now and I can feel it every single day. This last week when I did a Facebook Live on our page, I caught myself saying something before I started. And I said, I said, God, you're welcome. You, you, you are welcome in my worship. You are welcome in this place. And I just, been, I just remember thinking after I said it, I was like, well, yeah, duh, he's welcome. And even if he wasn't welcome, he's here anyways, because he's omnipresent, right? He's everywhere. But this is what I love about the God we serve is that even though he's omnipresent, you know, there's a reason why in the Old Testament, they carried the Ark of the Covenant with them wherever they went. And it's really because like, he wants to show us his tangible presence. And there are those of us, uh, even today, um, who really need to feel the love of God, his arms wrapped around you, filling you with hope, filling you with peace, filling you with love. And I really believe that he can meet you right where you are at. In fact, if you feel comfortable, we're just gonna lift our hands as an act of surrender. And just ask him if you need that tangible presence right now from the living God to meet you in your bedroom, in your living room, in your car, wherever you are at, lift your hands and just tell him, God, we need you. We need something authentic, something real, something that we can grab onto. And God, I believe that you can deliver. You are the real deal. You are the creator of heaven and earth, and yet you befriend us and you enter into our worship. And so God, right now, we do say that you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome. We give you all the praise, the glory and the honor. Be the 
same We'll never be the same We go from glory to glory to glory We're forever changed We're forever changed yeah. You call me your friend Into your endless kingdom by the blood I was made, no longer a slave. And now you're taking us higher. We go through glory, glory, glory. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. We go through glory, glory.
Amen. For everybody listening right now, watching, um, whether it's on their mobile device or on their television, this song that we sang, Father, is our prayer. Your favor, your blessing, that your presence would be with us wherever we are, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, 
in front of us, behind us, Father. We are inviting your presence in right now, right now, this minute. As, as we are watching on the screen, Father, we're asking that your Holy Spirit will invade that room, Father, that you will touch hearts right now, Lord God. We know that those that are watching, Father, there may be several that are watching that are, have lost jobs, Father. Their bank accounts are going backwards, Father. They, they, they feel hopeless financially. They feel hopeless relationally, Lord God. They're struggling in so many different ways. And so we're asking, Father, for your blessing, for your favor, God, that you will step into that room right now, Holy Spirit. Invade our hearts. Invade our lives. Give us Give us an assurance of your presence like never before, Father. Father, we look to you. We look to the cross. And we thank you for your goodness, your grace. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done in our lives. And even though right now there's trying times, Father, we are hopeful. We are assured. We know that you have us, God, that you are with us, Lord God, that your presence is real and true in our lives. And that even right now, even right now, Father, in the midst of the, of the struggle, you can step in there. You can give hope and peace and joy. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Great worship. Wow, <laughs> Holy man. Holy moly, man. What a, what a great start to the morning. Mm. Well, welcome once again. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining online. Uh, we've already got to spend an amazing time in worship uh, already today. And so, uh, and we're going to continue uh, and we're going to get to hear an awesome word from Pastor Wayne in just a few minutes. So yep. Uh, yep. get ready for that. Kind of prepare yourself, get a notebook, get your phone out to take some notes because yep. uh, yep. it's going to be yep. awesome. Yeah. And just a couple quick announcements. You know, as you know, we're doing this whole online thing now. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Can oh, you yeah. believe that? And this is probably going to be the most the most uh, unique Easter yeah. you have ever celebrated because you're not going to be uh, going driving to a church to attend a service. The, the, you know, the, the weirdest way of having Easter, we're going to be doing it online. And so I'm just wanting to let you know that we're doing this online, but here's the deal. Our staff, we have been working diligently to create a very unique, a very powerful, a very meaningful service. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you to, to join us online, to watch just the way you're watching right now. Join us online. We're going to have a Facebook page and, and a, a, an event that we're going to uh, ask you to, to invite your friends to as well so you can join. I mean, this is going to be a great, great oh, yeah. service that's coming. I mean, it's it's going to be egg-tastic. It's going to be extremely uh, or good. Whatever. He just... <laughs> <laughs> Ignore Jairus. And with that, on top of that, we're also going to be doing a Good Friday service on Friday afternoon at noon. You can yep. mark your calendars. We're going to yep. go on Facebook Live at noon on Friday. And we're going to have a short, really, it's not going to be a long service, but it's going right. to be an opportunity for us to uh, celebrate Good Friday together with a short time of worship, a message. And then we're actually going to have this really cool opportunity to celebrate communion right. um, together in, in this context. Yeah, so you'll get to hear more about this. We're going to talk about absolutely. this. Just send messages out there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And one last thing. You know what? We, as a church, even though though we're doing services online and it might feel like you're physically disconnected from your from your church family we as a church life church we're still on mission yeah. we've not yeah. stopped doing in fact our staff has been working diligently to to create these uh these service opportunities online so you can join us so we can connect this way we've got life groups that are meeting through zoom meetings there's all kinds of ways that people are are connecting right now this is something that we're doing we're still on mission we're still about preaching the gospel of jesus yeah. christ and seeing lives change and transformed. And that means that, that we're still even supporting missionaries around the world. We are still supporting people in our community. And so your giving is essential. Yeah. We're asking you to continue to be faithful in your giving. I have to be honest with you guys. You guys bless me. I cannot believe how faithful and how amazing. I have been here in this building by myself and I get the ring and there's people walk, driving up to, to drop their tie checks off. This is pretty amazing. You guys are incredibly generous and thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. We are still on mission. We're still about reaching people for Jesus Christ, seeing lives change and transformed. And so thank you so much for being generous with us. You can give to Life Church through text to give. There's, there's a way to give. You can give to text to give. You can give online through our website or our church center app, uh, lifechurchnow.org forward slash give. You can give there. You can, also, uh, you can also just come to by the church. A lot of people have been doing and drop it off, yeah. or you could just mail it to the church, P.O. Box 5067, Coralville, Iowa, 52241. All that stuff will be in the comments. You'll be able to, to, to get that stuff. So anyways, thank you so much for joining us online. Are you ready for a word from God? Come on. Amen. All right. Come on. Pastor Wayne. 
All right, it's been said a number of times already, but we are thrilled to have you here. This is our fourth time of doing nothing but a digital service, and so um, Rich has done this three times already, preaching to an empty house. This is my first time, and um, it's different. I'll just say that. It is. Uh, but we're thrilled to have you here. Now, I was going to contemplate and say, hey, you all look great. But I figured that it'd just only take a few, some of you at least, just a few moments to say he's in no position whatsoever to make that kind of judgment about our looks. So I'm not going to mention your pink pajamas or your camouflage pajamas or the virus 15 or 20 that you've put on during this time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into the message that we prepared for today. And we're going to pick up with a series that Rich has been leading us on uh, for the last several Sundays, and it's Don't Quit. And today we're going to talk about Don't Quit on Your Future. If you've got a Bible and you want to follow along, Romans 8, 28 is where we're headed, and also James uh, chapter 1. We'll get there in a little bit, uh, but these passages will be on the screen. In the summer of 1964, I was four years old, so get your calculator out and figure that out. Um, we moved to a small town from uh, Harrisburg area of Pennsylvania to uh, Finley, Ohio. We rented a home on Parkside Drive in Finley. Uh, Dad had left his family's florist business in eastern Pennsylvania uh, to attend Weinbrenner Theological Seminary. He was going to prepare to be a pastor. Now, we lived in this little house, uh, yellow house. We had one car. Usually it ran. Uh, usually it had gas in it. Sometimes it didn't. And when it didn't have gas in it, that would require my dad to walk two miles to school and to his after-school job to work. And it also would require us uh, on the weekends not to be able to go to our regular church, that we, our home church that was supporting dad in part of this venture. So we would have to walk to another church. In the midst of all of that, I remember one weekday afternoon we sat down to lunch and there were only two items left in the entire house in the refrigerator or in cabinets for all of us to eat. There were five of us, two items. The two items were one can of mixed fruit. That was for mom and the three kids. Uh, I was the oldest, four, three, and two. And then the other item was a mason jar full of canned cherries. Dad was going to get to that because he worked the most. He had the most energy output going on. And one thing you have to know, however, is that uh, Dad is not a fan of fruit. In fact, Dad hates cherries. Now, hate is not a word that Dad uses, but Dad hates cherries. And so, we had our lunch, we took our naps, I remember getting up from the nap, and uh, lo and behold, our pastor from our regular church was arriving, he was out front on the curb, and his trunk was up, and he was bringing groceries to our house. And one thing that I had learned during this time was the bottom line philosophy of my dad. And it is this, he taught us from the moment that we could talk to understand all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. And the other part of his philosophy was this, and I say philosophy, it was his belief system, but it was God never works a moment too soon or a moment too late. So we're watching uh, Pastor Jackson come up the walk here, and I, I, and I remember, I'm only four years old, but I remember specifically that there was celebration, and I didn't know that word specifically at that moment, but there was a, a real sense of gratification and, and thankfulness, but it was more than just, hey, we're getting stuff. There was a, the real recognition, I mean, my dad says, God always works things out for good, for those who love the Lord, and, and we're getting some stuff here. Pretty darn cool. Now, one of the things that you um, will also have to know is, as a four years, four years old, I certainly have no idea the weight that was on my parents during this time. I don't know how long 
the food had been windling down. I don't know how many times before it had really been that close and not been as close as it was that day. I don't know the weight that my parents were carrying, uh, as, especially as my mom, a stay-at-home mom, who is a master of doing much with little, and she has been all of her life. And since I'm the judge here and no one else can speak up, she is the master in all the world of doing great with almost nothing. And she's very practiced at it. But I don't know the weight they were carrying as they saw, as she saw the food whittling down and, and, and knew today at lunch, this meal is the last one we have. Any knowledge of where next food is coming from? And I have to feed my spouse something that he despises. In the midst of all that, however, I was very well aware of the satisfaction, elation, joy that my parents were expressing as this help and money came. Some of you are in a position right now where you need to hear this message, the message of Romans 8, 28, that says, and we know all things work together for good for those who love God who've been called according to his purpose. Now, lots of reasons you need to hear that kind of a message from the scripture right now. Uh, some of you have been facing some stuff for quite some period of time. Uh, you've had an illness. You lost your job some time ago. You moved here to this area not knowing where a job was going to come from, and so far it hasn't come. You have a family member who has become very ill, and you don't know what their outcome is going to be. You've lost a spouse, maybe to death, maybe to divorce, and you're not quite sure how you're going to go on right now. Your future does not look very bright, very hopeful. And then you add all this coronavirus stuff in the mix, COVID-19, and, and some of you say, would I ever get a job? Is that even possible? Some of you have just freshly lost your job, or it appears you're going to. Well, you know, hey, I, I, supposedly I'm supposed to be able to, to file for unemployment, but um, I don't know how that works. Uh, supposedly it's supposed to be easy, and I have to just fill out a bunch of forms and all of that, but I don't know if it's really that simple or not, and I, I, I hate filling out forms, and, 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 and you can't get anybody on the phone to answer any kinds of questions. Or maybe you're a spouse of a family and you're a healthcare worker, and you work on the front lines or in a doctor's office or wherever, and you say, I don't know how susceptible I am of catching the virus. And even if I think I'm going to be okay, I, I, I don't know if I'm passing this on to somebody else when I go home. Or I go home and I say, I, I don't know. Um, I have to quarantine myself for the rest of my family, and especially if I'm a female and it's my husband taking care of the rest of the family. I, I don't know how that's going. And even though we're in the same house, this might be utter disaster. And as bad as that is, most of us really comprehend that some people are really in a bind. They're scared or they have real life stuff going on right now that makes their future wildly unknown. And so the need for a comprehension of Romans 8, 28. And we know all things work together for good for those who love God, who've been called according to his purpose. It's very important to, to understand the, the content inside of that one short little verse. And we know, we know, we're convinced, says the apostle Paul, it's true. It's a settled reality. You can put stock in it. If you once forgot, remember again, we know. There's no debate. There's no uncertainty. We know. All things. Now let's take a break here for a moment. How many things are all things? All things, everything. Everything, all things. We know all things. Scripture says, work for good for those who love the Lord, work, work for good, work for something that's better than where we're at, for those who love the Lord. Now, it does say, we're going to go back here in just a minute to look at the middle of the verse, but it does say, this promise is for those who love God. And there's a description of who it is who loves God. How do you know you love God? For those who've been called according to his purpose. The inference is that not only have you been called, but you've answered the call. 
to his purposes. You've aligned yourself. You said, hey, I know I'm not perfect and I can't completely be perfect, but I am intense on living my life the best I possibly can to please God for his purposes. That's my objective. That's what I'm aligned to. So we know we're unconvinced it's true All things work together for those who love the Lord. All things work together for good for those who love God who've been called according to his purpose. So, here's the deal. The scripture does not ever say that everything that happens is good to us, but it does say this, everything that happens to us, good, bad, and ugly, indifferent, horrendous, joyful, otherwise, all things are being worked together into something bigger And actually better, actually good, than the ingredients themselves. So, you can imagine a chef on one of these uh, cooking shows walking up to the gas range. And on the the top of the range is this great big pot. This this stainless steel pot. And in go the ingredients, numerous ingredients being stirred together. Some of the ingredients are not by themselves anything you or certainly not I would ever choose to eat all by ourselves. Really not all that tasty stuff or appetizing stuff. But but nevertheless, all it goes into the pot. It's stirred. It's worked together. Or maybe it's in some dish that's put in the oven. And it is is made together to be something in the end that uh, at least the people on the show who are judging say, hey, that's good. At least that's what you hope they, they say. And and so there's something that is being worked together, stirred together, created together, manufactured that is better than the individual ingredients themselves. So says the apostle Paul, that's what's happening in our lives if we are Christians. God is taking all the circumstances, regardless of how wretched they are, and he is working something. Whether you see it, whether you don't see it, whether you know it, whether you don't know it, there's a certainty that you can rest on that what he's cooking up is something wildly better in the end than what you're experiencing right now. Now, you say, well, that sounds encouraging and I want to believe all that. But you pull this, uh, all things work together for good for those who love God, out of one verse, out of one chapter out of one book of the entire Bible, and it sounds great, but does anything else in the Bible say all that's true? Or are you just being a very hyper-positive person? In James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, is a demonstration that this is a Bible-wide comprehension. The um, passage starts this way, consider it of great potential benefit to my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, we've got to stop here just for a minute, and you'll see that I'm quoting out of the WLH version of the Scripture, which is the Wayne L. Hefner version of the Scripture, okay? And, 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 and please understand me, the real version says this, Consider it pure joy, my friends, when you face trials of many kinds. And if you're like me, you stop and you go, Hello, James. I don't sign up on my own for trials of many kinds, much less consider them wonderful and joyful and nothing but pure joy. Okay? And so... I am not telling you you should rewrite scripture, but I have changed this as a way for me years ago to get a step towards comprehending, embracing a truth that was tough. And because I've already been to the end of the verse, I'm going to take you there in a moment, I'm able to understand that the, because of what happens in the end, I can start from the beginning and I can say, I'll at least consider it of great potential benefit that I'm Facing trials of many kinds. Because, you know, the testing of your faith develops perseverance, says the scripture. And you go, well, good gosh. I never volunteered for my faith to be tested. 
It is not in my schedule to have to have perseverance do some work inside of me. I don't care to have to do anything with perseverance, to be quite honest. Let's just do away with that. And yet here's the challenge. God is the designer and the author of how we get from one place to another. He determines how it is that we get grown up in him. He determines what is necessary, what lessons are needed for us to advance. And therefore, you can argue with God about how he does things, but once you know this is how he does things, then you're just confined to say, okay, how do I cooperate with this? Consider it a great potential benefit, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you can be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And let me say this, not lacking anything in your, your present place, your present condition of maturity. See, we're, we're moving as believers from glory to glory, from one place of strength to another place of strength. And there is work involved that perseverance has to do. There's dynamics involved that are required of us to get from one place of maturity to another place of maturity. God has designed it that way. This work, all things work together. This work that's going on, the work of perseverance has an outcome that's to take us to a better place. But this work is challenging. It's tough. God is always working inside of us, no matter how bleak it looks, no matter how bad. And we may be screaming and kicking and hollering and cussing at him, but he's always working if we're willing to cooperate towards something good. There's something going on, something being worked in you, whether you're aware of it or not. As a believer, we're told that that something is good. It's got a purpose. It's got a destiny that is not only better than where you're at now, it's good. All things work together for good. And yet if you're like me, you often see your confidence, your faith, evaporating away. It just takes off sometimes. Uh, our grip on our faith and our confidence, it just weakens and... Confidence wants to escape. Knowing this, Paul says this uh, in another epistle he wrote in Hebrews 10.35. He says, hey, don't throw away your confidence. And again, I, I'm a realist, so, so I, I approach Scripture and I read that and I say, yeah, if you're a common person, you go, well, <laughs> easy to say, Paul. But how do I not throw, throw away my confidence? What does that mean? It just kind of goes somewhere. And I'm not going to go into uh, Greek language and Greek tenses of words and things. But I want to explain to you what this verse really literally means. It means you have been throwing away your confidence. Stop throwing away your confidence and continue to stop throwing away your confidence. Now, easy picture for us. We get this idea of throwing away your confidence and, and our confidence is up here. It's kind of like we're uh, participants in the, in the Boston Tea Party and, and uh, throw our confidence away. We just cast it aside, dump it. A, a, a purposeful action of Getting rid of our confidence. Yet he says, stop throwing away your confidence. Okay, so that picture goes to don't throw. Don't throw your confidence. But the, the other line is this. And continue to stop throwing away your confidence. And you can picture that. It's like this. It's an ongoing work. It's a struggle. There's a temptation to throw. And you have to go sometimes and retrieve. And sometimes you start to throw the confidence, starts to get away. And you go and you stop yourself. No, don't throw away your confidence. Believe, continue to trust in God. 
It's in this passage uh, that's just a little, 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 little phrase. Don't throw your confidence. But Paul says it to the Hebrews in a very specific situation. And, he's, and, and that's addressed, at least in part, in the verses immediately before this verse. Hebrews 10, 32 says this. Remember those earlier days when you had received the light accepted Christ in your life when you stood your ground in the great contest in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so threatened. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. In that time, in that day and age, you held on to your confidence you were doing well. And now in this moment, this state, I implore you to not forget, he continues on, so do not now throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. So the bottom line, line, bottom line is this. God is doing good things, whether you can see them or not. Even in the behind the scenes, with the curtain drawn, and all you can see is the crap, the pain, the turmoil, the uncertainty. What's going to happen to my future? Where am I going to be? Am I going to survive? Will there be anything good? Or am I just making it by, so to speak? Or maybe I should even check out. Behind the scenes of that, God is working. And there's, you have the right to expect that at some point in time, in the future, in this life, you will experience life again. I mean life. Uh, I don't mean just the ability to, to, to get by. I mean joy, peace, fun, excitement, richness, enjoyment, productivity, contentment, laughter, satisfaction, good things. And we know, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Not everything that happens is good, but God promises to make good out of everything. Now, I need to address a popular notion that's um, very uh, spread wide in our culture, and it's this. You often hear people say, um, they applied for a job, they really wanted the job, they were intent on getting the job, they very much hoped for getting the job, and they didn't get the job. And so the statement follows this way. Oh well, everything happens for a reason. And the assumption is, what they're saying is, everything happens for a uh, good reason. For some ultimate good purpose. Everything that happens to us is, is, is calculated in advance and it's going to turn out well no matter what happens, no matter what we're seeing out here. Now, I want to, I want to be right up front with you. If you say that a lot, even as a believer, if you've said that before, I'm going to prove to you here in just a minute, you don't believe that. And it's not a biblical statement. There is not a divinely ordained, cosmically initiated reason for every event. If so, then it doesn't matter what choices we ever make. Why would you interfere with the fun of your toddler children and tell them they may not go play in the street? Why would you interfere? Why would you need to be, be aware of what they were doing? Your junior high child, as he goes or she goes to school and from school, and you know, why would you take the effort to know when the, the final bell, the let out bell rings and how long it should take them to get home and who they're walking home with? And what, why should you interject yourself if they go do something, if they get hit, if something bad bef befalls them? What does it matter? Everything happens for a reason. See, you don't believe that. If that were true, everything happens for a reason. I should eat at McDonald's even more than I already do because who cares about my health? Everything happens for a reason. You don't believe that? I mean, if you lost your son or daughter or some dear family member or friend to a drunk driver 
who came out of nowhere recklessly driving and killed your friend or your family member, you tell me that you believe, ah, it doesn't matter, everything happens for a reason. You don't believe that. And it's not biblical. The reason things, some things happen, of course, as most of us know, if we're honest, is because we do stupid things. <laughs> Other people do stupid things. That's why some of the things happen that happen. There's no promise anywhere that everything that happens will be beneficial. It will result in a positive outcome apart from God. There is the promise of God to Christ followers that he will take the things that are hurtful, painful, tragic, and he will give, if we give them to him, he will make good come out of them. There is the promise that your future is not over just because it is really tough right now. There is more to come, and it's good, and it's good because of God. So you say, well, why doesn't God just not have, have the, let the bad things happen? Why does he not just stop them? He's all-powerful. Why doesn't he just stop it there? And that is the question of questions. And it is the question that most people who have difficulty with the Christian faith stumble over and keeps them apart, because if God is good then why would he not spare us from all this pain and hurt? A deep subject, but it really is fairly simple. The implications are challenging, and you can still argue with how God does things, but the bottom line is he does them how he wants to. And so, the bottom line is he created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It was a perfect place. He gave them very specific orders about what to do, what not to do. They chose ultimately, they were given free will, key word here, free will, free phrase, and they chose ultimately to do something other than he told them to do. Now, why in the world would God give them free will? What a stupid lack of forethought decision on his part, huh? And yet what he wanted, he wanted a relationship with people. He wanted to have people to choose him, to love him, or out of their own volition, their own decision. He wanted it not to be a puppet relationship, because if, he's, if we don't have any choice in the whole affair, then, then there's no relationship. If you ever played with uh, marionettes or, or, or puppets or anything else in your toy box when you were young, uh, you doing those kind of things is, is you manipulating. Uh, you don't actually have a real, maybe you imagined it in your head, but you have no real relationship with those things. God wants a relationship. So the fallout is he gives us free will. And because of that free will, people do hurtful things, spiteful things, selfish things uncaring things and it hurts us and them there's also the bottom line that all of us are born with this inherent desire to be god of our own life we have sin the same tendency that Adam and Eve had in once they made that one decision all humanity from there forth being born uh had this inherent sinful nature, the nature, the desire to be God of our own life. No one tell me what to do. And therefore, we live in an imperfect world. Um, the world, the whole earth itself has issues, disease, weather disasters, natural disasters, COVID-19, all kinds of things. So we live in this dynamic, this relationship where God has given us free will. Uh, now, now, that's wildly different than determinism or fatalism for those of you who are familiar with those philosophies. The outcome is not already determined. Uh, we have some freedom in those things. In 1997, I was forced to leave the staff of a church that I had served as uh, the right-hand person with the founding pastor. For 16 years I had been there. A new senior pastor had uh, been brought in and he did some very mean and hurtful things to me as an individual and to specific members of my family, things that most people know nothing about. By mid-1998, all of my family had left the church. I had left before them, but by that period they had gone. And not long after that, the new pastor had just blown up the church and lots of people had left. The founding pastor stepped back in to attempt to rescue things. In that time, I'd started a couple of businesses uh, to have some income. 
due to a number of mistakes, naivete, a 500-year flood, the collapse of an economy in the United States in 1998. By the end of the year, I was completely uh, out of business on both businesses. And uh, without going into uh, specific details, um, we were in financial ruin. And you know, it takes a second to say we were in financial ruin. The weight of that, and some of you know these kinds of things, the weight of that is a little bit longer <laughs> than one second. Eventually, after months without a, a job, I found a part-time job. I was hired to help out a local business owner and something. I sh very quickly became full-time there. And then he had another business in Cedar Rapids where he needed an operations manager. And given what I had proven there, he took me there, and I was his operations manager. And um, things seemed to be going decently, but lo and behold, behind the scenes, uh, the finances of that business were really bad, and ultimately it was going to have to shut or be bought out. It was bought out. Uh, they had their own, the new people had their own uh, staff again, and so I was unemployed again. After a time on unemployment, found another job, ultimately months down the road. Uh, during that time, uh, we found Life Church. My wife and I began coming here, our children, the two who were not in school, uh, away at college at that time. Um, I only became part of the founding board of Life Church. Eventually, a couple, several years ago, three years ago, hired uh, on staff full time, and then um, about a year and a half ago, became the executive pastor. Um, that's a distance of 13 years. In the last four years, as healing became more pronounced and strength was returning. All three of our children got married, all three of them in a nine-month period of time. Since that time, we've added five grandchildren. And man, I got to tell you, life's pretty good. Now, that doesn't mean I won't ever face pronounced hardship again. I pray, oh God, please. But there's no guarantee. The thing is that there are things that were worked into me during that period of time that I needed. And how many of you know that if there are some things worked into you, that probably means you're going to be worked over. But God is working for your good. The good you are headed for has some work to it, yes. And our tendency is when the work to not throw away our confidence shows up, we drift toward giving up anyway. We're inclined to conclude that our future is done, at least a good future. Many of you are in that place maybe right now. Your spouse has left you. You've lost your income or part of it. You don't know what's going to happen. You're fearful that you may get the virus, and because of your own specific circumstances, it may have devastating impact upon you. None of those kinds of things are good. But there is the promise of God to Christ's followers that he will take the things that are hurtful, painful, tragic, and if we give them to him, he will make good come out of them. Not just a mere existence, but life. And let me say it one more time. Joy, peace, fun, excitement, richness, enjoyment, productivity, contentment, laughter, satisfaction, exuberance. Psalm 27, 13 says this, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The wretched stuff that's happening right now will someday give way here, not when I die and go to heaven, here to goodness that I see and experience again. And we know and we know all things work together. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, says Romans 8, 28. What if you've never said, hey, God, I proclaim you are 
first in my life. Because you've heard that this promise applies to such people, but you're not there. Today's the day you feel that stirring. You feel that, man, I want to believe. I want that promise to be true. I want to align myself with a God who, who operates like that. Just in your own heart, your own voice out loud to God, say, dear God, I know this won't make me perfect, but I do want to say you are my God. And I'm asking you to make things turn out well for me. Now, you can in the comment section uh, let us know that you made that decision for the very first time in your life. You can email us. Or you can go to a place like needhim.org, needhim.org, him being Jesus, and learn more about what it means to follow Jesus. Lots to learn. Uh, don't sweat over that. But just know that if you've aligned yourself with him, he's going to do good things in your life. After living a number of other places in life, my father and mother ended up back in the Finley, Ohio area. Dad is now under hospice care in their home. I'm not able to get to him because of the need to keep my mom from being compromised. Love you, Mom. Love you, Dad. So Dad is not in the condition to speak to you today. But if Kenneth Wayne Hefner could speak to you, he would want you to know. Life is real. Pain is real. God is real. And all things work together for God, for, for good, for those who love God. And that is real. You can say to yourself, I am not perfect, but I love the Lord. That means my present is temporary and my future is good. Amen? In that context, let's enter worship again. And as has been said before, you might just want to stand in the presence of the Lord and worship Him. Join in with us. We trust you. We trust you, your ways are higher than our own, and we trust you, we trust you, your ways are higher than our own, we trust you, we trust you. Your ways are higher than our own, and we trust you, we trust you, your ways are higher than our own. See you. 
all things, we know that all things, all things are working for the good to those who love the Lord. Right now, Father, you are answering questions in many people's lives. Questions of why, why these challenges, why this unemployment, why this reversal in our financial world, why the uncertainty of a job. God, you are answering those questions. We know that you love us and we know that you care for us and that you have a future for us. We thank you, Father, for your word this, this today. We thank you, God, that you are speaking, even right now, Father, that you are speaking to hearts. They're responding to you. They're surrendering their hearts to you. They're surrendering their thoughts, their cares, their struggles, everything, Father. We're just laying them at your feet. We give you our lives. We thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing in our lives. In spite of the, the pandemic that is happening around us, you are at work. And we're so thankful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us uh, online t- today. And I encourage you to, to connect with us. You can put comments in the, in the, in the comments section of, the, of YouTube. Also, if you're not following us on Facebook, you should follow us on Facebook. This coming week, we're going to have a lot of announcements coming through the week concerning uh, the Easter weekend. And so, so you can be in the know of that. I encourage you to, to follow us on Facebook or on Instagram, and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to find out more about what's going on here at Life Church. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us online today. And it's so good to be encouraged by the word of God. And our prayer is that you would be drawn closer to Jesus, the hope of our world. We're navigating uncharted territory as a nation and as a church. Even though we're having to distance ourselves from one another, that doesn't mean that God has distanced himself from us. I wanna encourage you to download the Bible app or dive into scripture, worship with Elevation or Bethel on YouTube, and finally pray. As Pastor Rich said, you can't worry and pray at the same time. If you haven't seen them yet, click see more on the description of this video and you'll find links to Life Kids curriculum and other important information. We know some of your devices do not allow you to engage with us in the chat window, but we haven't forgotten you. And for those of you who have uh, more questions and, and don't know who to ask, we haven't forgotten you either. Finally, for those who, who wanna take the next step toward a relationship with Jesus, we want to talk with you and pray with you. Email us at info at lifechurchnow.org or call 319-435-8090. Our team really wants to pray with you. We'll be posting encouraging words, prayer times, and worship experiences on our Facebook and Instagram pages. So don't forget to follow us at Life Church IA. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that now and don't forget to ring the bell. You can help us reach 1,000 subscribers. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and we'll see you again next week.